How are we preparing ourselves for the coming of Christ? A blessed Saturday, brothers and sisters. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. St. John the Baptist did not limit himself to teaching repentance or conversion. In recognizing Jesus as the Lamb of God, he had the profound humility to hold up Jesus as the one sent by God, drawing back so that he might take lead. What gave birth to this life so upright, so consistent, spent totally for God in preparing the way for Jesus? The answer is simple. It was born from the relationship with God from prayer, which was the thread that guided him throughout his existence. John was the divine gift for which his parents, Zachariah and Elizabeth, had been praying for so many years. A great gift, humanly impossible to hope for, because they were both advanced in years and Elizabeth was barren. Yet nothing is impossible to God. The announcement of this birth happened precisely in the place of prayer, in the temple of Jerusalem. Indeed, it happened when Zechariah had the great privilege of entering the holiest place in the temple to offer incense to the Lord. St. John the Baptist's birth was also marked by prayer, the Benedictus, the hymn of joy, praise, and thanksgiving, which Zechariah raises to the Lord and which we recite every morning in Lourdes, exalts God's action in history and prophetically indicates the mission of their son John to go before the Son of God made flesh to prepare his ways. As they were coming down from the mountain, the disciples asked Jesus, why did the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He said in reply, Elijah will indeed come and restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come. And they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they please. So also will the Son of Man suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. In today's Gospel, Jesus welcomed the question from his disciples. They seemed to be sincerely trying to understand why or how things were unfolding so differently from what they had expected. How good Jesus is that He never despises or shames us, even in our slowness to understand His ways. Even here, He reminded them gently but clearly that the Son of Man would suffer. Jesus had not come to establish a worldly kingdom here, but to lead us through this world to the kingdom of heaven that will have no end. We may fear to suffer as the apostles did, but let us keep our eyes on Jesus and not lose hope. He has taken all this suffering upon Himself 
and redeem it so we can never suffer for naught. He doesn't promise to take all the difficulties, but He, God with us, Emmanuel, is with us through them all. It seems from today's scripture, the disciples understood the meaning of Jesus' words all at once, in a moment. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. Those moments we sometimes experience, whether slow awakenings or coincidences, are wonderful expressions of God's loving care for us. We can sense the Holy Spirit at work, enlightening our minds to see God's hand at work in a new way, and our hearts filled with gratitude, courage, and childlike simplicity to ask questions of Jesus. He invites us to speak up in prayer, wrestle with difficult truths, and persevere, bringing our difficulties to Him with the same openness and sincerity as His apostles did. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, steer our seal for your righteousness and for your kingdom. Free us from complacency and from compromising with the ways of sin and worldliness, that we may be wholeheartedly devoted to you and to your kingdom. Jesus, King of mercy, we trust in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers, and sisters. God bless our Catholic Church and couples for Christ.